He's, he founded the Senate Conservatives Fund, a conservative grassroots organization that took the fight to Obamacare, wasteful spending, and weak need Republican legislatures itching to compromise with Obama. When he resigned from the United States Senate two years ago, he shocked Washington when he went to the Heritage Foundation, but he has transformed it into a major force for truth and liberty in America. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a true champion of the grassroots, my friend, Senator Jim DeMint. Thank you. Up there to oh, great David. Thank you and hello Hawkeye State. <laughs> it really is great to be with all of you here today. I, I couldn't help but notice the motto of Iowa. Our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain. What a great motto. <laughs> It's a great motto, it's got a determined spirit. It's unlike states like Illinois that act like their motto is spin to the end. <laughs> or, or maybe California's new motto is we pledge to live on the edge. <laughs> so I'm glad we're here in Iowa where the love of freedom is as vast as all the cornfields. Iowa always gets a head start on every presidential race. And you already have some of the best prospects for 2016 backstage today. So it's going to be a good day for all of you. But speaking of elections, there seems to be some confusion about who really won the election last November. <laughs> President Obama thinks that it's those who didn't vote who won the election. That's who he's listening to. But even worse, the Washington establishment, the K Street lobbyists, and all their big government cronies think they won last year's election. It's true. They think they defeated the Tea Party and all the conservatives in the primaries. And now they want their payback. You know, they want their amnesty for cheap labor. They want their big crony export-import bank. Uh, their internet sales tax their UN treaties. Now, they want tax breaks for big corporations and their trade deals that have less to do with free trade than trading favors. They want more easy money from the Fed to keep the stock market going up and they want more spending despite our unsustainable debt. In short, they want to continue business as usual in Washington. That's what the grown-ups call governing. That's what they call bipartisan compromise because the big spending liberals in both parties want to get back to business as usual in Washington. The big crony capitalists in Washington think they have vanquished the conservatives. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars to get rid of those pesky patriots who stood in the way of reckless spending, bailouts, cronyism, and regulations that benefit big business while destroying small businesses across America. But we're here in Iowa today to tell them they're dead wrong. The truth is, the Republicans who won seats in the House and the Senate last November ran against the status quo. Practically every Republican ran against executive amnesty, and Obamacare. Many ran against big government programs like the Export-Import Bank. They all talked about excessive spending, waste, and debt, and they were all elected because they promised to serve as conservatives. And because conservative voters turned out to vote while the moderates and liberals stayed home. We put them there. Our job as conservative leaders and organizations and private citizens is to make sure that these congressmen and senators continue to hear the voices of freedom-minded Americans and not be co-opted by the chattering class inside Washington. We also must build public support for our ideas, convince all Americans that their lives will be better and their future will be brighter if they use our policies. Our policies create opportunity for everyone, but favoritism for none. 
We don't divide America into small groups and practice the politics of division like Obama and his leftist allies. We don't advocate for corporate handouts while trying to cut the benefits of the most vulnerable like some hypocritical politicians. Conservatism is much bigger than just a political philosophy. It's a worldview that continues to improve the lives and standards of living for everyone by understanding and building on those timeless principles that have worked for generations all around the world. We want to build a better future for everyone by conserving the ideas that work and applying them to our challenges today. Conserving the best ideas from the past is something people do all the time. The folks who built that smartphone in your pocket didn't start from scratch. These technological miracles were built by combining centuries of knowledge with innovative ideas today to make your phone just a little bit better this year than it was last year. Public policy should work the same way. That's why at Heritage we devote considerable resources every year doing research about what policies have worked in the past, what policies are working at the states today and around the world, so we can help develop policies for the future that are based on sound conservative principles and ideas that have proven themselves. This is how we can make real progress as a society and as a nation. <clears throat> As we head into the next presidential election, let's make sure that all Americans know that conservative policies will make America better, more prosperous, and stronger in the future. We should begin by reminding fellow citizens that a strong and prosperous America depends on three things. A strong society, a strong economy, and a strong defense. These three pillars support the foundation for conservative ideas, and they are interdependent and inseparable. America will not have a strong economy without a strong society that produces people with the character and capabilities to succeed. And we cannot have a strong defense unless we have a strong economy and a federal government that is limited to its constitutional responsibilities which as you know, is primary, yeah. primary responsibility of the federal government is to protect and defend our homeland and our people. That's what we need to focus on. Now friends, these are not complicated ideas unless they are obscured and made confusing by the media and the politicians. How do we build a strong society? For starters, let's change the welfare programs that are supposed to help the poor and make sure they encourage marriage and strong families instead of causing their decline. The, the numbers don't lie. A child that grows up in a home with a married mother and father is very unlikely to live in poverty. It's an economic issue as well as a cultural issue. Let's also create an education system that benefits children rather than union bosses and politicians. <laughs> it's easy. That several, several states have shown us how to create education opportunity for all children. Building on successes from other states or conserving their good ideas, Arizona created education savings accounts that provide parents with a substantial amount of money to choose the best education opportunities for their children. It's a, a great idea. Disabled children receive a larger allocation for specialized education. Now parents can homeschool, they can hire tutors, they can join with other parents to contract for teaching specialists or send their children to traditional public, private, or faith-based schools. And get this, if, if parents don't spend all the money in their child's education savings account in one year, the balance passes over to the next year. They even have children going to college now on the surpluses from education savings accounts. It's, it's a simple idea. I mean, these two ideas alone, federal programs that encourage strong families and more education opportunities will build safer communities, more capable citizens, more opportunities in a stronger American society. And these ideas won't cost taxpayers an additional dime. In fact, they would actually cut federal spending. 
These are not hard ideas. A strong society will support a stronger American economy. But we need to stop the federal government from holding our economy back, like they've tried to do with energy development. The energy revolution in America is a golden opportunity to control our own destiny, to create prosperity for our citizens, to solve the unsustainable debt problems at the state and federal level, and to support freedom-minded allies all around the world. But practically all the recent energy development has been on private and state lands. The federal government has severely restricted new energy development. And the federal government controls almost a third of the land mass in the United States. Can, can you imagine the opportunities we would create if the federal government just let prosperity happen? It would be incredible. <clears throat> now, this is going to really shock you, but conservatives are the real progressives in Washington. It's true. I know that's a little uncomfortable to hear, but it is the conservatives who are fighting against the status quo. They're committed to ending business as usual in Washington and showing Americans how we can progress to a better future for everyone. Conservatives want to progress to a nimble, citizen-centered government, government closer to home at the state and local level that's more accountable and effective, where people have many choices in all areas of their lives, not just the one choice offered by the federal government. <laughs> Common sense. Now, if we can do it with cell phones and computers, you know, we can certainly do it with health care and education and especially values. Folks, Americans must be free to decide what they believe and what they value without government-sponsored intimidation. Yes, sir. Now, those who call themselves progressives in Washington are the protectors of the status quo. The ones calling for more failed big government solutions like we heard from the president this week. It's the independent-minded conservatives who are offering the roadmap to real progress. Ask yourself, where are the bold student-centered reforms in education coming from? Certainly not the liberal leaders in lockstep with teachers unions working to shut down parent-directed choices, uh, public charters, and stop more education opportunities for students. No, it's the conservatives who have introduced Enhancing Education Opportunities for All Students Act Long name, but good idea. A plan to return control of dollars and education decisions to families. It's the conservatives who support the HERO Act, which aims at reforming the accreditation process in higher education to break the liberal monopoly in universities and give students a lot more for their money and more marketable skills. What about new energy solutions that will lower the cost of living for regular Americans and eliminate our dependence on unfriendly foreign countries for oil? You don't look to the radical left, those who call themselves progressives. Instead, look to supporters of the EXPAND Act, which encourages a modern, all-of-the-above approach to energy development and help achieve the goal of American energy independence. Ask yourself, who is dedicated to shining a spotlight on corruption. Who wants to cut out waste, fraud, and abuse? It's definitely not this administration, which the Associated Press has found to be the least transparent in history. And association, the Associated Press is no friend of conservatives. But it's not going to be the financial giants who are too big to fail, but not too big to bail. If, if you want to end the secrecy and the cozy relationships between big government and big business, look to conservatives who started and created the PATH Act, which gets government out of the mortgage business, gets taxpayers off the hook, and allows free competition. The fact is, conservatives see a problem and say, we need to change something. The Washington political establishment sees a problem and says, we need more money and more of the same. It's obvious who offers the solutions that will bring real progress to America. For us real progressives, all of our solutions have something in common. No matter what the issue is, in order to give people freedom and education, prosperity at home, and dignity in society, 
We need to clear the roadblocks of cronyism ahead. Decades of mismanagement in Washington have left the path of opportunity blocked by backroom deals and political favoritism. So we must clear out all these obstacles of cronyism to move forward. We must not be tempted by detours just to avoid confrontations with the left because they will fight to hold every inch that they have taken from freedom. And we must be willing to fight to retake freedom's sacred ground. Thank you. Now, this drive for real progress will have many backseat drivers and naysayers. There are too many people, too many powerful people who benefit from the status quo. But what's been the result of their control? Regular Americans have been shut out of decision making. Small businesses have been subjected to expensive regulations crafted by the big dogs and equality under the law has been replaced with sweetheart deals. This is neither free market nor responsible governance. It is cronyism. It is the single greatest roadblock to reform and you can find it everywhere in Washington. But at Heritage and throughout the conservative movement, we are giving notice to those who turn lawmaking into profit taking. Whether they walk the halls of Congress, Wall Street, or K Street, we will expose those who have bent the greatest institutions of the common good to serve their own greed. Our rallying cry is opportunity for all, but favoritism for none. I'll clap to that too. I know you, you and millions of Americans across this great nation share that vision. All they want is a fair shot at the American dream. It seems the only place that doesn't share this vision is Washington itself. I ask you to join me in welcoming all the true conservatives who follow me today, the real progressives, who will be speaking about their solutions for a stronger, more prosperous America with opportunity for all. And thank you for standing with us for the cause of freedom and supporting us in the fight to save this wonderful country. God bless all of you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, folks. Thank you.